Hi, my name is Johan van Skolkwijk and I'm from Six CDS. Here's just a quick update on what's happening with the renewal of professional registration and access new update on that. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but there's a few changes that's been made to the policy document. So most of it still stays the same. You need 25 credits of a five year cycle of which five of those need to come from category one, which is a compulsory category. What I find interesting is that the category one has now been split into two sections. You've got um, category one A and category one B. Category one A, you still have to accumulate a minimum of five credits in category one A, which is all of your um, validated events the ones that's validated by the voluntary associations and resides on excess database. Now, they've added a category 1B. Now, 1B is for all the non-validated and self-study that you do. So that is now moved from category 3B up to category 1B. There you can get a maximum of two credits per year. So interesting. So. Category 1 now consists of two sections, A and a B, B1. A is compulsory, still five CPD validated events. Now, category B, to repeat, is all of your self study non validated CPD events. Category 2, A and B, stays the same. For every 300 hours, you get one credit. For every 600 hours, you get two credits. And you can only claim a maximum of two per year. The mentoring stays the same, 50 hours gives you one credit, a maximum of one credit per year. Category 3A stays the same. If you belong to a voluntary association, you still get your one CPD credit per year in that category. You know, recognized VAs, we all know it's a size, 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 makers and all of them. Now category 3B, interestingly enough, has now been changed and it's now being called engineering community of practice. So it used to be individual activities, now it's engineering community of practice. That one is now split into various um, groupings. You've got research, project, evaluation and supervision. Two credits per year for that. That's evaluation of um, M degrees, um, PhDs, thesis, all of those kind of things. Evaluation of final year engineering students by external examiners. You've got supervision of students undertaking taking postgraduate studies, honors, master's, PhD, supervision of oral examinations of final year and postgraduate students. One credit for every 10 hours spent doing that. Then we move over to um, course and program evaluation. Evaluation of educational programs at university. Um, you also get ten, um, one credit for every 10 hours spent on that. Um, evaluation of educational qualifications, 10 hours, one credit. Moderation of university courses and assessments, 10 hours, one credit. Evaluation of competence and applications to, for registration for EXAS committees, 10 hours, one credit. CPD activity evaluation. So if you do uh, CPD evaluation for the various voluntary associations, you also get credits for that. Then um, we have got course and program development, developing of educational programs or activities, also 10 hours, one credit. And if you do lecturing or learning facilitation, part-time le lecturing to undergraduate and postgraduate students, one credit for every 10 hours spent. Um, that includes panel members, moderators, facilitators, um, all of those kind of things. Then participation in statutory professional institutions, engineering or non-engineering committees, or task groups. Interesting, non-engineering committees also included. 10 hours, one credit. Publications, publications of research papers in peer review journals, single author, two credits, more than one author, one credit per publication.
per, per author. Publication of technical articles, one credit per article, papers presented at conferences and congresses, posters and poster presentations. You also get one credit for each publications of research papers in peer review journals, single author two credits, more than two, then you get one credit per publication per author. And then capacity building, that's training excess assessors, one credit for every 10 hours spent. So that's the update from that point of view. Also remember, if you do postgraduate studies, um, you can also capture that in category one. So that will be um, relevant coursework completed or passed at a higher education institution. You can claim credits for that. Trade and occupational related programs, you can claim for that as well. And relevant additional postgraduate qualifications, you can also claim for that in category 1A. Interesting, if you do your PhD, you can claim 14 credits on completion of that and a master's 7 credits. So that's in a nutshell the, the update on the new um, application for a new professional registration. So to label the issue, we've got category 1A and B now instead of just category 1A. Um, A stays the same, five credits, minimum five credits over a five year cycle. So if you do um, self-study in the form of webinars or any one of those kind of things online, you can claim for that. So please remember that. Um, the key here is you must be able to prove it. So registration forms, um, screenshots, you know, those kind of things will, will help you in that one. Um, category two stays the same, A and B. Um, Work-based activity stays the same, mentoring stays the same, and then category 3A stays the same, but the B, as I've highlighted, has now changed. So you can claim for all those other activities in that category. Uh, you still have got two ways of doing your renewal. Um, the first one is online. Um, I do believe people battle with the online one. Um, it's not working as efficiently as it should, uh, people are struggling to delete stuff, they're struggling to add stuff, so it seems to be still a problem. You can, however, do it the manual way, and I, I can help you with that without a problem. I see they haven't updated the manual process or the paper-driven process yet, so um, I think in the meantime we will just use the normal ECPD1 form and then just when we do your self-study, but we'll just put in there category 1B. So that stays the same. The paperway seems to be working better at this stage. Most people are using that due to the system issues that, that we have with Excess Portal. Um, hopefully they'll sort it out um, as soon as possible. So that is still there and you still have to do your R1.1 form, which is the administrator form to do your formal application for renewal of professional registration. And a footnote, if your cycle falls in the year 2020, which was the COVID year, then you don't need 25 credits, you only need 20, of which four must come from category one. But most probably um, that will be dated now because as of your renewal in 2025, you're back to 25 credits. So just bear that in mind. I hope that that helped you just to you know see what's going on. I haven't seen much communication regarding this, and um, I literally had to go and, and find it on the net to see that there are there are these new changes. So yeah, good luck with that. And um, if you need help, please let me know. Um, here's my contact details, and I will help you through the process. I've actually got a demo um, ECPD one form which will help you and guide you through the process. So that is also available for you. And um, if you want me to sit and help you with that, more than welcome to just give me a shot and we can book a session. Okay, good luck with your renewals.